I got to hit that go live button. So anyway, that would help. Yeah. All right, y'all. We're, we're on live now. So anyway, let's do that again. We're, we're here live with Ricky Weeks this evening on uh, DHAM I Am on YouTube. So welcome, y'all. I forgot to hit the go live button, but we are also live on the radio. So if y'all are listening there and y'all would like to tune in, go over to DHAM I Am. The link's on my Facebook and it's on Racing Roots with Ham on Facebook as well. We're actually streaming on TikTok tonight too. Bryson's taking care of that. Yep, for the first time ever we're yeah. On it's our inaugural inaugural. Yep. Yeah. We're the inaugural, <laughs> yes. The inaugural, we're, the first weekly uh, well, first installment. Yeah, there you go. Of the yes. <laughs> yeah, so we're on TikTok for the first time now. And yes. Where's your mic? Oh, I didn't have you turned on. That's called, what number is that? One? Okay, say something. Hello. There hey, there we are. All I'm right. here now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't, couldn't hear myself. I thought it was a headphone issue. But yeah, we're yes. on we're on the TikToks and yeah. everywhere now. So that's yeah, so good. It's a little <laughs> bit distracting. We move things around a little bit. We're trying some different camera angles, let's, let's say. And we got Bryson over here now. And we got the other camera set up here for the TikToks. And so, you know. When you when you do that, you might tend to forget one thing or well, another. But we're uh, trying out different options. Well, to we're off to a good one. start. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. At least we're going. Yeah. You know, we we had an issue a couple of weeks ago. It was like it says it wasn't on, but whenever you go back and watch replay, it was on. Yeah. So it's like you just never know. But uh, so uh, and I mentioned Ricky Weeks is in with us. He is the seven-time champion at Cherokee Speedway, which is in Gaffney, South Carolina. If you haven't been there, it's uh, well, it used to be the world's fastest. Half mile. Half but mile. But shortened it's, it. They shortened it, yeah. Why would they do that? That's a good question because <laughs> I loved it when it was big. Yeah, man. But I guess it's easier to take care of or something. I don't know. No. I'm sure it's probably economical, you yeah. know, but um, I'm sure. I don't like it short. I loved it when it was long, but, mm-hmm. you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, he's also the five time Carolina Clash champion and the one time Carolina Clash South champion. Now, what's the difference in those two? That was just, uh, it was. Owned by the same man, but they run it on the southern end of the um, country. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we just went and run that thing, too. So Oh, anyway. gotcha. But it wasn't mm-hmm. much to it. It wasn't a lot of races. And, you know, it just – it's something yeah. to say. So, yeah. whatever. As I mentioned earlier, that was the tracks that I went to when I was a, in my teenage years. And that was kind of what got me interested in, in NASCAR, you know, getting into the big time, I guess you could say. But – uh and that was, uh, you know, going to the dirt tracks and seeing, and my dad going there as well, and seeing the guys over there tuning on the engines and the, the race car drivers and all that stuff. It's just like it puts that bug in you, like, man, this is what I want to do. Yeah, and it's easy for people to uh, forget how high tech the, the the dirt cars are, you know, especially the top cars. Yeah. Because uh, they're really high tech machines, and uh, people, a lot of people don't have no clue, you know, but yeah. they're, uh, you do, of course, but they, uh, you know, it's really high tech cars. Yeah, you can look at those if you know what you're looking at. Let's say uh, if you've been around the Cup Garage and worked or the Bush or any of those, or I say Bush, whatever it is now, Xfinity and all that, and then go to the dirt tracks and see those cars, and you'll see the same parts. Yeah, I mean it's it's just different different bodies basically. Yep. Yeah, they're uh, and and even more especially like with these uh, what's these cars called neck new. Oh, uh, the next gen, the next gen. gen, or some kind of gen, anyway. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of that stuff, you know, has been on dirt cars for a long time. So yeah, uh, you know, it's. Uh, but those, sure. I like those cars. I thought they've done a good job because the racing's mm-hmm. better. But yeah, uh, it's funny. Um, my first car, we call it my bush car, because when I bought it, it had a, a tree growing up through the oh. gear shift <laughs> hold on. Yeah, there you I go. Bought it out of a junkyard. So yeah, it's pretty funny how yeah. things start, you know, and right. And uh, I thought my dad was going to kill me. And, uh, <laughs> I brought that thing home, you know, and, and uh, he had always had some race cars when I was a kid. But he never really, you know, he didn't have a lot of money. So everything he did, he had to build himself. But he didn't drive. And then when I when I got old enough, I wanted a car. Well, he wanted to quit. So oh, okay. I was like, well, I'm not quitting. I'm going to get me a car. And then finally, yeah. about a year and a half later, he started helping me. And then that was a real big help because he knew what he was doing and I didn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, you probably learned a lot from him then. Oh, he taught me a bunch. I mean, yeah. I went through a uh, – I probably saved myself probably six years of learning curve just by his knowledge, you know. Sure. So, yeah. really helped me. So, was that like the Street Stock series mm-hmm. you yeah. started in? Yeah, it was uh, 
I got a picture here. I don't think you can get it on TV. But so yeah. while you're it's, looking um, at that, is that how you actually got your start into it, racing? It, it is. Okay, good. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to do it because my dad did it. Okay, show it to this camera right here. But, but that's it. Come I a little bit closer to it. Like a 62 Nova. Okay. And show uh, it over here, too. Anyway, it was a... Like I said, it was a bush car. Okay. A bush car, yeah. The bush growing up. We finally it. got it drug out of there. That's cool. Then we started yeah. working what, on it. And what, what year was that, Ricky? Um, 1982, I think. Okay. 81 or 82. Okay. And and where did you race that? At Harris. At Harris, okay. Mm -hmm. I remember Harris. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Which I just lived three miles from Harris now. Oh. But then I lived further away, but I, I live yeah. in that area now. Do they but still race there? They do. Okay. They do. Yeah. I haven't heard that one in a while. And, uh, that was one of the ones I'd never been to, but I used yeah. to hear about it a lot. I, yeah. I used to hear about everywhere that Doug Sanders raced that pretty much. Well, that originally that was an asphalt track. Okay. And uh, like Richard Petty and mm -hmm. the, the old NASCAR stuff, it actually came there and run some. Okay. And uh, my dad told me anyway, and mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I didn't see none of that. But And then right. they eventually took the asphalt out and made a dirt track. Okay. Yeah, I thought I'd seen recently, I think it was Dale Jr. or somebody posted a, a picture of a car at Harris Speedway. I mean, it might have been Dargan. You know, Dargan's yeah, got all he, these old yeah. pictures, and he posts a lot of great stuff. He does. He's a, he's a, he's definitely got a bunch of good history stuff. Yeah. Dargan Watts, and he's the one that got me in touch with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, if you ever look at Dargan Watts on Facebook, and he has uh, – he posts – I don't – he does a lot of research. He and, does. And he writes a lot of blog posts and things – about these pictures and and his historian, I guess you could. Yeah, he's say. a very smart man and uh, mm -hmm. really knowledgeable when it comes to racing forever. You know, yeah. back even when they was running on the beach at Daytona, you know, which yes. they have a thing every year. You know, some yeah. kind of big parade down there. Yeah. Didn't you go to that? Racing's North Turn yeah. Beach mm -hmm. Parade. There, that's the um, the Legends Beach Parade, mm -hmm. and that's the original. Uh, Tracy and I rode in a 1941 Ford. That was uh, Steve Levitt's car, and it was his dad's, Gardner Levitt. Mm -hmm. He raced up north, and he brought it there and, and let us drive it, which was very nice. That was, yeah. yeah. I and bet that was cool. It was, man, that was like the time of my life there, something I'd never gotten to do or never thought I would get to do. I mean, we weren't racing, but we were driving around, and it, you know, it, it, oh, was, yeah. it was a parade. It was a whole yeah, deal. but I mean, you know, just think, oh, you could kind of relive in your mind as you was coming down the beach yeah. that they actually raced on that. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Wow, four point one mile, <laughs> yeah. I believe it was, and part of the uh, part of the the asphalt has changed from where it was. Well, asphalt's changed, obviously. Yeah. But I mean, it moved location, but the beach was still the same. Yeah. Different sand, probably. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Shifts of sands. Uh, <laughs> one of my same sponsors, location, uh, right? <laughs> which he's passed away now, but his name was Jack Starrett. He yes. actually saw some races at Daytona on the beach. Oh wow! So yeah. he went to the races. Yeah, he actually Gosh. saw some races. And yeah. That, I, he was uh, when he was alive. He'd tell us some stories and all about that. That was really cool. Wow! So he would have went there before 1958. Oh yeah. So between 49 and 58. Mm -hmm. Actually, they raced there in 48, but then that was more like an exhibition race. And then they got together there at the Streamline Hotel, and uh, and decided that they're going to organize NASCAR. Yep. And went racing. And now look at it. Wow. They raced at Charlotte. <laughs> Then the Daytona race was the third race of the season. But Charlotte, Darlington maybe, and then day, the Daytona race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that was very good stuff. And, and so Dargan does that. And he – actually, I got some pictures of him or video of him in the in the, uh, the pace car. That, yeah. You know, leading the field there. But he – there's three people that I really enjoy talking to that know their racing history and are amazing to talk to. Mr. Bill Blair. Oh, yeah. He's a fine feller. Yeah. And Will Cronkite. I never met him. Yep, you need to meet Will He's Cronkite. online right now, Mr. Cratchity. Oh, is he really good? Mm -hmm. He's down in, um, was it Fort Mill area, Clover? In that area. I really don't know. So he's not hard to meet up with. You're not that far from there. Well, oh, Mr. Yeah. Will. Oh, Mr. Will is in um, Rock Hill. Rock Hill. Yeah. Yeah, that's not that far. Close enough. I think a little further north from Rock Hill, but yeah, that's not too far. And you, um, especially from if you race out at Carolina, <laughs> but you're, are you still racing in? No. no okay. I've, I've, I've retired. Um, I got COVID um, in uh, 2020, and I honestly thought I was going to die. Stayed in the oh. hospital for 12 days, and uh, while I was in there, me and the good Lord, we discussed it, and when I come out, I quit. So, oh, okay. 
Yeah. But, uh, and I think he knew what he was talking about because it's got so expensive now, I couldn't afford to race no way. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. I understand. I, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, Chris Ferguson? Does a pretty good job. Yeah, he does a real good job. He's a nice guy, too. Yeah. He, uh, he does real good, especially at the caliber he's trying to race. You know, uh, I'm really wondering how he gets all the money to do it with, but I'm happy mm -hmm. for him. Yeah. But um, it's tough now, man. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a. But I don't have to tell you. It's yep. just got really expensive. Expensive. Yeah, we went to school with his mom. Yeah. And and so um, he's going to come in one of these days. But he went on and won Bristol the past two races. Mm -hmm. uh, the past two times he raced dirt there. Yeah, he's raced out at Cherokee. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's a good racer. Places. He's real good. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got the family in there on it too. So. Oh, yeah. That's, good that's one good thing about it. That's what I loved about it because mm -hmm. you could do it as a family sport, you know, mm -hmm. especially on the dirt. Yeah. You know, uh, the asphalt, they made it a little hard to get your family on the in, infield. But, uh, you know, I knew what they was doing. But still, I like the dirt part so they could all just get in there and be a part of it. Yeah. How old's your granddaughter now? My granddaughter is 15, going okay. on 16. Okay. So I said that little promo video I put together, I saw her in there. Yeah, <laughs> she lives with us. We've She's lived yeah. with us ever since she was a baby. And uh, yeah. she loves racing. I actually had fixed her a car right before I quit. And then... I, I got rid of that too because if I wasn't racing, she wasn't racing. So yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't think she was real happy about it, but you know, it was just time to quit. It was for her own good, I guess. Yeah. For yeah. her own good. Yeah. yeah she Brand loves it though. Yeah. What? I was going to say, Brandon, your cut, your nephew, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon Blair. Yep. He, he raced out at Bristol this last race. He sure did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I raced at the Bristol. Uh, I, I don't know what, what's that in. Sometime in the 80s, I think it was, oh, okay. when they did it the first time. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't either. They, they dirted it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Bryson, that was new on me, too. Um, yeah, new on me, too. I thought the first time they did it was when they ran the, the World of Outlaws stuff, like, a couple of years ago. I, no, didn't, I had no, no idea. No, they did it. Yeah. I, can't, I can't remember when. It's about 20 years ago, but um, they, um, they had more banking in it than they did this time, and the cars were breaking the wheels and the spindles and the axle tubes. Anything you could break about it, it was breaking them. Mm. It was that's a fast joint. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he didn't he didn't make it to the race part. He ended up getting in a little wreck. So um, he was wanting to go race at Gaffney coming up, but uh, uh, it's expensive. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he's dealing with right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, I, I feel sorry for the people that's trying to do it now because. I mean, it's just gone, you know, it's astronomical. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I don't even know how people can scrape up enough money to do it. Right. Unless they're just filthy rich. Yeah, sure. And I wasn't, so, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Hey, let's take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and we'll get some questions and comments from our listeners. And uh, and we also want to thank Swimming Pool and Spa, Neil Johnson over there. If you need a pool liner, put in your pool, obviously, and uh, he'll come over there and put it in after, uh, by himself. I mean, he's he's kind of a big deal when it comes to putting pool liners in. Uh, I think he's got a few people helping him, but his number is 704-322-4204. That's Swimming Pool and Spa right here on 940 A Davy Avenue in Statesville. So go check it out. And uh, his Facebook page and his Instagram. And they'll also sell you a spa. What do you think about that, Tracy? Oh, yeah. They've got spas. Spa. <laughs> the old spa would be kind of nice. Not right now, but anyway. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back to Racing Roots with Ham. With more than 20,000 students, Iredell Statesville schools rank among the 20 largest school districts in North Carolina. Our teachers represent a wealth of knowledge, with the average teacher in our district having 15 years of teaching experience. Iredell Statesville School's innovative approach blends a one-to-one -one technology initiative with collaborative best practices and a hands-on approach to learning. In addition to traditional school settings, the district provides a wide range of exciting educational opportunities through our choice programs, specifically designed for unique student needs. No matter your age, your background, or your personal goals, there's a place for you in the Iredell Statesville Schools. In today's world, the most important thing you can give your child is a strong Christian foundation. We at Hope Christian Academy, located outside of Troutman, can help provide that foundation by offering an education centered around Jesus Christ. Hope Christian Academy's small class sizes enable our experienced staff 
to give much needed one-on-one -on -one attention to each of our students. Our school offers a safe Christian environment, affordable tuition, quality education, and accepts Opportunity Scholarship. If these things sound right for your family, then give us a call at 704-528-5555 to set up a tour or schedule your child's free day of education. Real Country 550 and 92.9 WAME. And we're back to Racing Roots with ham and i was just showing everybody my new energy drink it's called being it's made uh being cherry juice so being if you're watching whoever you are i'm assuming your name might be being kum kumbacha or whatever oh kombucha yeah it's that's good for what you it's, that's what it's ran off of so i went down to uh wilson weenie wagon today when Don't i was over this way mowing yes or eric wilson over there and i got one of his uh the big wilson's what i like to get no other weenie measures up Mm -hmm. Big Wilson. Did you get your fries and a <laughs> no, no, no <laughs> chips. And there's other and slogans that I could say, but uh, no, we did not. But I forgot why I was mentioning that. I don't know. Probably because you oh. would say you eat healthy, but then you yes, don't I had, eat healthy. I had the big the big weenie, which is like a sausage, but I also got sauerkraut and mustard. See, sauerkraut's great for your digestion, and mustard's got a lot of turmeric in it or turmeric, which is good for inflama inflammation. Which is offsets the bun. Forget the processed meat and all that. Yeah, yeah. offsets yeah. the bun. And the bun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and those are very good. That's yes, it. they are. Yes, yeah. they are. I've had his weenies before, so they are good. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> enough hey, about that. Enough about that. <laughs> enough That's about good. weenies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moving on up. Hey, so... Speaking of weenies, let's, let's mention uh, some of our listeners here. Oh, yeah. Just kidding, y'all. Y'all know better me a weenie. Now. Did you just hear that? <laughs> That's messed up. All right. So listen yeah. in. We've got Junkyard Mean Racing, Dargan Watts, Mark Smith, Mr. Cratchity, Will himself, and Becky Courtney. Hold on. Who's Mark Smith with now? Mark Smith just says Mark Smith. No, it says Dream Racers. It doesn't say. Okay, Dream Racers. He does the oh, Dream he made Racer a comment. cars. Okay, Smitty equals Dream Racers. Okay. Yep. I got you. So Dream Racers, they put the those. Uh, have you ever seen the? They're like a. Mm, they have NASCAR. Like a they have car drag racing. Little cars. It's a roll cage, that's half open, and then kids can, in hospitals. Oh, they okay. put them in a hospital and that's they put cool. a PlayStation Four in there, and the kids can go in there and play the video games. That's awesome. That's pretty yeah. cool thing. It yeah. is. And so he, he's been on the show before, but that, yeah, very cool. Yeah. And if you watch those videos, you might get some uh, wet eyes yeah, or whatever. Sweaty, sweaty eyes. That's it. Yeah. Sweaty eyes. As the old fence climber dinner. says, yeah. 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 So Eric Grant's yeah. tuned in. He said, Ricky is the man. Ooh. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, do you know that? How much did you pay him? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, I wasn't supposed to tell you, but. <laughs> that's confidential. I did actually have a comment on one of my posts that, um, that, whenever they saw you were coming on i had several actually but i'll have to let one of y'all look that up while we're talking but so uh dargan watts is tuned in right and yes. also cratchity the, the two of the ones that i mentioned that uh, i like to listen to them and all their history and stories and stuff uh junkyard mean racing uh when they <laughs> when they gonna start i guess that was earlier so mm -hmm. if y'all have any questions put a big q in front of it and put a question out there for ricky and i'm sure you got something for him this evening so we're talking to ricky weeks who is the seven-time champion of cherokee speedway in gaffney south carolina and a five-time carolina clash champion and one-time clash south carolina clash but you don't know how many races you've won you've won multi hundreds or tens of hundreds <laughs> yeah i've been really like uh, blessed ever since i started uh, about the second year we went to winning races and we won till i quit you know so mm -hmm. it's uh been very fortunate but i never we just didn't keep up with it I, I i don't know why but yeah like i told you earlier you know we didn't think about keeping up with what we'd won we wanted to win the next one <laughs> yeah so. that's it i liked your comment whenever whenever they asked you about winning and he said you come out here to win and he's like well that's why we go racing ain't it yeah. to win <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but you'd won in, in that particular video that was your 12th win of the year right that track yeah at carolina I believe it was, I or it was friendship. I, I think it was friendship at that. That was probably in that series. Okay. Um, I don't know what series it was, but it was because uh -huh. there at, uh, after I, I run at Cherokee forever and for a long time, everybody called me the one track wonder because we didn't travel, you know, because oh. I didn't travel because of my job. Yeah. And uh, so I got tired of hearing that crap. 
And so sure. <laughs> we kind of got set up a little bit where we could start running some series. Well, we went to winning on those too. So, you know, it was just we uh, we were making a choice by staying at home because we didn't want to travel. But yeah, we kind of got our hand forced. But I'm glad we did because I had a lot of fun doing that. Well, you also raced with the uh, – was it Have a Tampa series? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I bet that was a rush. That was. I, I actually won uh, one or two of those things, which was like – wasn't supposed to happen, you know, because, right. I mean, they, uh, it just wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, well, why isn't that, that on my that list? Was, those wins. guys were in another <laughs> level than we were, you know, as far as money and stuff like that. But yeah. they had come to Gaffney, and uh, and it was a time. And back then, if you come there, you're just going to have to outrun me because we were spot on, yeah. and uh, they didn't get it done. Oh, so. wow, yeah. <laughs> was that even like Scott Bloomquist? Yeah, yeah, they were all there. Wow, yeah, yeah Freddie Smith and all of Mike Duvall. Yeah. Flintstone Flyer. All up. Buck Simmons. Yeah. There's all there. Yeah. Even, uh, let's see, Jeff Purvis, okay. uh, which, you know, something bad happened to him. I can't remember what happened. Yeah, he was a He was a great it's, racer, but, yeah. you know, was, all them, all those Phoenix traveling racing. people then mm-hmm. were there. But, um, like I said, that was pretty cool. Yeah. We was pulling our car with a pickup truck, you know, and they had the big rigs, so that was pretty neat. Yeah, did for <laughs> the guys with all the big money come out there, and then you still beat them. Yeah, but no, we had a great race car just because we didn't have a big truck. I was going right. to say, have you, a good car. You put all your money into your car. Yeah, we yeah. had a good Instead car. Of the trailer. You know, we had as good a car as they had. Oh, yeah. We just didn't have their rig and stuff. You know? Right, right. Yeah. So there has been a question come through. Junkyard Mean Racing says, What was your favorite racetrack to race at? Withful. Withful. In Virginia. Withful, Virginia. Okay. I had to learn how to say it because I called it Whiteville, Whiteville. but it's Whiteville. Whiteville, yeah. I had to learn it. No, not Whiteville. I know. With it's spelled kind of like that. Right? Withville. That, uh, that's, a, that's a really good track. I mean, of course, I can't leave out Cherokee when it was big, you know, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Gaffney, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah. I loved it, too. But uh, Withville is probably the one of the best tracks I ever went to away from Gaffney, you know. Mm-hmm. But, what did you like about that one? It's big. It's fast. Yeah. I banked. Mm-hmm. I always liked the big fast ones, so it was just it was just it was suited me, you know. So. Mm-hmm. More of an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of big and fast, did you ever think about racing anything in NASCAR or the Sportsman Series? Remember that? Because I know Doug Sanders raced some in the Sportsman. Yeah, I had a couple of friends that went that route, but uh, again, the reason I never, I mean, I thought about it a lot, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, money was the enemy, and uh so we just focused on what we could afford, and, and that's where we raced. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of people, let's say a lot of people, you ask them if they want to race for NASCAR, and they're like, nah, not really. I'm fine doing what I'm doing now as far as, you know, sprint car racing or dirt racing. You know, I bet if you ask Chris Ferguson, he's like, no, nah, I'm happy doing this. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would, uh, if I could change anything about what I did through my years, you know, I would have liked to have traveled out further if I could have, you know. But okay. if I had done that, I'd have had to quit my job, and I couldn't do that because I was going to take care of my family. So, you know, mm-hmm. but I don't regret it. Had a good time. Yeah. And uh, had a great career, and I'm leaving it at that. Yeah. Well, good. So, are you in any, any of the Hall of Fames? I am. Uh, actually, the. Cherokees and uh, Carolina Clash also. So, uh, mm-hmm. but they used to back when I was really chasing that thing. It was a big deal then, and it, I'm not saying it ain't now. But they had uh, banquets at the Speedway Club at Charlotte and all. And mm-hmm. if you won, they picked you up in a limousine. You know, I mean, they made it special. So we had a lot of fun doing that. That was that was some fun times. Yeah, but I bet they could tell you how many races you won there. Yeah, they probably could. But, but you're like, it don't matter. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, like I said, uh, we was very blessed, won a lot of races. I raced for a long time with my dad. My dad helped me for years till my mom got sick. And I, I'll never, you know, be able to get that back because that was just awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a lot of things that people don't get to do ever. Yeah. Just spend a lot of time with their dad. And, uh, but shit, when my mom got sick, he quit. And so, uh, you know, he had, he had a setup where we could hammer down, so we just kept on keeping on. Mm-hmm. And then I've I got hooked up with some good people through the years with uh, different r- driving for people. And, uh, and I didn't own my cars for a long time. And then uh, probably the last ten years, I raced or more. Yeah. I, I owned my own stuff. You know. What did you prefer? 
Um, well, it's got its pros and cons, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, some of the people I drove for, money was no object. And, of course, the problem with that is a lot of times they think you ought to win every race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, right. You know, everybody there has got plenty of money, so you don't win every race. Right. I liked what old Jack Sturrett always said. He said, if you got a race car and you don't like losing, you better get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, because you're probably well, going to lose more than you win. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, um, but, but like I said, it was nice not having to worry about paying for the bills and stuff too. And yeah. actually made money doing it. You know, yeah. got, you got paid to drive and that was pretty cool too. Speaking of Jack Sturrett, I remember always seeing that on the either side of cars or the side of, uh, signs, whatever, Sturrett trucking, right? Yep. Yeah. I just yeah. remember that. It was unreal how many people he helped and nobody mm -hmm. even knew it. You know, he was just that type of guy. Yeah. You know, he loved racing, had plenty of money. You wouldn't even think he could buy your Coca-Cola, you know, the mm -hmm. way he dressed and stuff. But he just, it, he might walk down the pits and buy four or five people a set of tires and a drum of fuel and stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though he was like, like when I drove for him, you know, we had five race cars and stuff. I mean, you know, we had all kind of stuff and stuff, but yeah, he still done that stuff too, you know. Yeah. He loved to be needed. That was, that's what made mm -hmm. him happy. Yeah. That's very cool. He, yeah. he was, uh, I know he passed away, uh, Something out about a forklift. Yeah, he, he was. Uh, well, he he worked even though he was old. He still worked every day in his. Uh, mm -hmm. He had a big old uh, sand pit and stuff for an, uh, then trucking company too. But he drove a lift all the time, and he had had mm -hmm. some kind of procedure, and the medicine had made him dizzy, and he fell mm -hmm. off of the lift when he was getting out of it. In oh, his head. yeah. But, but he was doing what he loved. So. Right. Yeah. Good man. Oh, very good man. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah, he was uh, he was a great man. When he got killed, I was like, uh -oh. yeah. But some more people mm -hmm. stepped up, and um, it was just a blessing, you know. They just happened to walk up at the right time, and that was Phyllis and Ike Smith, and uh, they just filled right in where he went out, and mm -hmm. we just kept on keeping on. Yeah. So who was who else was uh, some of your sponsors through the years? Well, Parton Lumber Company, Parton Lumber Company. Okay. I always say. Parton. Yeah. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, they've been with me since I've started, which that's where I work. And oh. uh, they've helped me ever since I started. And, uh, of course, uh, Jack Sturette, he did. And then Phyllis and Ike. Uh, we had uh, Avco for a sponsor on parks and stuff. And we've had American Racer tires for years. Uh, they give us a few tires, but we got a really good price on the rest of them, you know. And then uh, – uh, when I drove for uh, I drove for J.D. Brown, which uh, Dylan Brown still his grandson races now, and they're doing really good. Mm. And then I drove for Jamie Henderson, which I, he's one of the owners on Chris uh, Chris Madden's car now. But uh, mm. they were uh, Henderson Amusements, and uh, now they had big money. They uh, that's a good deal right there. But, yeah, and good people too. Good. What was it like when you won a race and you come into work? Uh you know it. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of funny, the people at work, <laughs> yeah. they wasn't really into racing much, oh, okay. you know. Yeah. Now, uh, the owners and stuff, you know, they were happy, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. it was just, we just kind of never let it interfere, you know. We just, okay. they a lot of times you wouldn't want to come to work because you'd be wore out and tired. Yeah, and, right. And then you had more money too, so, but mm -hmm. you'd get up and go anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask if they ever had to remind you that you still got to work, you know. No, nah, they never had to do that. I was disciplined you, myself for that. But yeah. I must admit, sometimes, especially when I was driving for people for a while, I'd been making more racing than I was working, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to go in today or not. But, you know, I kept mm. on trucking on. So. Yeah. That's good. Those uh, sponsors are really important. <laughs> oh, yeah, they was for me because, like I said, uh, my dad, he he was he filled me with a lot of knowledge, but he didn't have a lot of money, you know. But that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. They, well, they say in racing, what's the old saying there, Bison? You know this one. Start if you want to become a millionaire in racing, you got to start with ten. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I <laughs> you, think that's the way it is, one. and that is the way it is. That's start with a large true. fortune, you'll make a small one. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So another question yeah. did come through. Yeah. It says, what was your favorite person to race against? Uh my favorite person to race against was Mike Duval. Oh, Me and yeah. Mike, we were friends, and he was a really tough competitor, and he actually taught me a lot when I was young, and uh, 
and man, we just had some really good racing. He was, uh, he raced you hard, you know, but he, uh, he had raced you fair. As long as you raced him fair, he's kind of like Logano, you know, if you put something to him, he's going to put it back to you. But, yeah. but he taught me that too, you know, and yeah. a lot comes with that. Cause if people knows that's going to happen, you know, they'll quit, they'll start racing you clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The infamous Flintstone flyer out there. Yeah. yeah he was a good one. Yeah. Those, those guys are, were to me, cause that's the way I started going to dirt tracks, mm-hmm. but they were the, they were the coolest and they're the ones I looked up to, you know, of course you always hear about NASCAR, but it's like these guys were out there doing it. And some of them, I remember a guy named Tom McCarter, Tom McCarter, I think. Yeah. I remember seeing him flip. He was, he was driving a Camaro or something, flipped the thing over and then they just flipped it back. And then he went racing again, that dude. And he would go out there and, and win like crazy. Doug oh, yeah. Sanders is another one that would just go out there and him and his brother mm-hmm. and uh, win a lot. Yeah, Doug's been around a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, uh, Duval, he uh, – I seen him take some rough licks, man. We uh, – one night, me and my wife was talking about this week, he hit the end of the wall at Gaffney, and everybody there, you could hear a pin drop. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you thought he was dead. You yeah. Know, it was that type of wreck. But. Yeah. Thank the Lord it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, I saw there's a tribute video of him for him on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's got some pretty cool footage on there. So we've got Amy Queen Chapin over here. She's drawing. She's doing a uh, painting this evening. So you can check her out, amyqueenchapinart.com, for all her social media links and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Hitting the mic there. That's all right. That thing looks like a – so Bryson's doing uh, streaming on TikTok over here and it looks like the uh there's a rabbit's foot on the end of the mic yeah so here's the deal with that it was so hard to get that thing on there that i didn't even bother taking it off when it, you know it works great when you're out in the in the wind you know and uh whenever i was doing some of my artifact hunting and doing videos for that kind of stuff and the wind would just when the wind gets in that mic it like cuts it off so i put that thing on there but i'm like all right i'm just gonna leave it on there it looks funny it's cool it, it's kind of like a decoration on there, you know. It kind of makes it look kind of cool. Makes me feel lucky. Yes, <laughs> you got a you got a rub on it there, and <laughs> get your get your Wait luck. Wait a minute, I'll see what it. I want to remember what <laughs> hair felt like. At least, it's, yeah, that's it. Just do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put it up here. Take a left one day. Uh, at least it's not uh, pink or whatever, you know. I mean, oh Lord, that's fine though. Yeah, we might have to stop the interview on that one. <laughs> pink or something. What you got a pink one there for ham? A uh, pink what, rabbit's foot. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Yep. All right. So if y'all were just tuned in, we got Ricky Weeks in with us, and he is a um, let's see, seven-time champion at Cherokee. I just leave that last one off. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. The five-time Carolina Clash. Yeah. But you might as well say six-time. You know, Carolina Clash is still. Yeah, the same, it was owned by the same people. But and like I said, the other one, it wasn't a lot to it, but it uh. Yeah. It was all right. But it's all right. It still paid money. Yeah. It was still a win. A it win is still, a win. Still a win and had good checks. That's there all that go. matters. But. But, but here's the other thing. Who else can say that they've done that, first of all, or uh, won a dirt track race, or is a, is a Hall of Famer of anything? I don't know. So don't, there. Don't ever think about that either. <laughs> it, uh, like I said, I just feel blessed to have been able to do yeah. what i done, especially with the, the road I had to come from. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, it uh, – I don't know. It uh, it was just natural for me, you know. I was just I could just drive. You mm-hmm. know, Dad, he uh, put me in a little car when I was uh, as, he had a garage, and the way he tended to me, I had a car that I drove in the field. Oh, there <laughs> so, you go. Uh, yeah. Every day you'd put five gallons of gas in the car, and I drove it out there in the field till I run out of gas. So, oh. <laughs> so I learned how to drive in the field. Yeah. But uh, while he wasn't watching, of course, you know, I was cutting up. So oh, yeah, of course. It uh, it helped me when I did go to racing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it was, I don't know, just dirt. I just loved the way I could feel my car, you know, and, and stuff and read my car. And, and then, you know, it really helped me. Yeah. Well, in one of the videos, the lady said, uh, she whenever you said, I, I just love being here. I think it might have been uh, Friendship Speedway or something. Mm-hmm. And then she said, well, he loved having you. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, like, I always set my own cars up, and the reason I did that is I couldn't blame nobody. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. If it didn't drive good, it was my fault. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't get out and say, well, if you'd set it up right, I could have run faster. Well, that, that's know? smart. I've, I've so never heard a driver the way say it, that. That's So I always just set yeah. my own cars up, no matter whether I drove for anybody or what. I did all that myself. Okay. All right, so Bryson, who, 
What driver would say that nowadays? I'm just curious if you say say what now that would say that they they set their own cars up that way if they don't run good it's their own fault. Let's just say. Um, I can't think of any. I, I don't. Well, it's hard because you think you don't, Kyle Busch would say that. I, pro- I mean, I don't think so. Probably not. <laughs> I'm um, not picking. I don't him, speak for him, but I you know, know if I for, you know if I was to assume whether he would or not, probably not. Yes, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> It, it it would be yeah. hard to find find a guy, and I'm sure there there's somebody mm-hmm. you know. I'm I can't think of you know maybe somebody. maybe uh well Carl Edwards let's say yeah he, he might have been he, one to say he would have been like one that. of one of those guys yeah um and um yeah but I think a, a lot of the drivers nowadays they they show up and you know the car's ready and mm-hmm. they have no I, I'm, I'm sure they're more educated than you think on what's going on but a, I'm sure a lot of them aren't and they probably have no clue what's going on um. And they probably, you know, they they just show up to drive the car now, and that's mm-hmm. the way it is. And so I don't think you find that that yeah. sort of attitude anymore. Exactly. And, and Speaking it, of drivers, yeah. hey. there there went one. <laughs> that must have been Kyle Busch. He was listening to. He might have been. Yeah, <laughs> might have got sliding into pit road. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, to, and getting out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kyle. I was just joking. <laughs> yeah, Nothing yeah, against right, you. Yeah. Right. But um, uh, uh, I I think that's probably what sets Kyle Larson apart. From what's happening now mm-hmm. um i'd say he's one of those guys that could do that mm-hmm. even though he probably don't but i'm sure he does because uh, i'm friends with kevin rumley the mm-hmm. guy that owns the car the dirt late model car he drives mm-hmm. and uh kevin you know he just couldn't believe how knowledgeable he was as far as race cars go yeah you know and and i'm sure that's one reason that he's a step above the rest right mm-hmm. yeah it's a dirt track thing i guess yeah yeah, yeah i mean i think that that's helps. but yeah when we were talking about that mm-hmm. that's that is one person that was kind of in my mind i was thinking yeah kyle larson might be that guy All right yeah but i don't know if he would have been as as so that's pretty that's a pretty polite thing for a driver to say i think to to say yeah 100 you know, percent. yeah you wouldn't yeah. yeah that's not heard often today right so uh junkyard you got a question there there are two questions actually are, so the first one is, where do you see super late model racing in five years? <laughs> Broke. Broke. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Um, something, in my opinion, is going to have to change because it's definitely pushing the lower uh, buck people out already. And I just don't know how many people that can afford to do it at the level it's doing. I mean, you take these big races now like they had at Bristol. You know, they had, what, 20 cars for $50,000? I mean, what the heck, mm-hmm. you know? It's expensive. I mean, yeah. I can remember we had races like that years ago, and they'd have 100 at Cherokee, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I don't know. I don't see it anything good happening from here on out if they don't get a hold on it. Um, but... How do you harness technology? That's the ten thousand dollar question. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. that's what's cost this, caused all this is technology. It's up to a million dollar question now, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you know, and and I mean, how do you uh-huh. how do you stop it? You yeah, know, right. I mean, I don't know. Mm-mm. Don't it'll be electric next? That <laughs> that's my fear. <laughs> that's that's my biggest. They'll fear. put a sound yeah. system on it where you can hear it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's Those, what they need. Uh, mm-hmm. What's them cars that's electric now? The the Teslas. Yeah, they've got a sound when you back up. You oh, know, do they? Yeah, it's so boom, you can boom, hear boom, it. Boom, boom, boom. No, oh, okay. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Didn't know that. I didn't know that either, but my daughter rode in one, and she was telling me when you put it in reverse that it made a sound so people could hear it moving, mm-hmm. which makes sense. Right. You know? yeah. mm-hmm. But it's crazy. We'll yeah. have to ask <laughs> Mr. Roger what his does mr rogers what's he gonna know he's gonna tell us because he owns Won't one you be my neighbor that's oh. what i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly like what i was thinking. Uh, so the next question is what is his blue ridge outlaw history ah uh, well uh i won a lot of races with them in a short time and i love that series because i thought it was <laughs> set up for lower buck people and uh when I went to running it, that's why I went to running it because I was running low on funds, and uh, and he had it set up kind of to where um, the older cars and and had different kind of engines and things, and he did it all by weight and stuff, and he still does, um, and I think it could be adjusted, but uh, some more. But anyway, uh, had a lot of fun doing that. 
they put wings back on them and i come up through the time when the cars were wedge cars you know so i know how those worked anyway and mm -hmm. uh, so i really like that a lot because you could you know the wings you can lean on them wings because that air's you well you know how important air is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyway i uh i just won a bunch of races i didn't win the championship i had a chance to win it and uh it rained one of the races out and we didn't get to run it so hey mm. had fun I ain't worried about it <laughs> I, I yeah. like how you classify it low butt people meaning kind of sort of broke <laughs> well you know I, I, I wouldn't call them broke but well broke after the race they don't, they don't have enough money to run like the lucas oil series yes. and things mm -hmm. like that you know i mean like if you'll and i don't you know i'm not knocking them i think it's awesome but like I watched a video of uh, Brandon Shepard's shop up at a Rocket House, and uh, they had like 10 or 12 cars sitting there ready to race dirt cars. You know, it looked like a Winston or a next, whatever they call it mm -hmm. now, Monster Energy uh, <laughs> shop, you know. And yeah. I mean, that's what you're running against when you go running that series, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, like I said, I just, don't, I, I just mm -hmm. don't see how it can keep going this way. Yeah. But that's just me. All right. So is there any tracks that you would have liked to race that that you didn't get to? A lot. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's what you mentioned, going around. You yeah, like I, around, I never so. did get to go to Eldora. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, we were going two different times. Yeah. And two different times, I had something bad happen. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Me and Furman, one of the owners of the company, we were working on an electrical box the day we were leaving and got blowed up. So me and him ended up in the burn center. And then, and the car was already in route up there, so they mm -hmm. uh, turned around and come back. And then the next yeah. time uh, we were going, my dad got diagnosed with throat cancer, so we had to go to Winston Salem oh. to the hospital. So oh, okay. I just give up on that because every time I've tried to go, something bad happens. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, Bryson, what was that you just showed me? 4K. We have 4,000 4, likes, likes on, on the TikTok video. Oh, very nice. Which is pretty cool for our first ever. So cool. for, our, for our inaugural. Here. Let me rub this fuzzy thing. <laughs> you're, uh, <laughs> Keep doing is. that. Lucky Whatever you're doing, coming, that's right. Handy yeah. after yeah, all. It's working. Yeah. You're, did you ever think you were going to be a TikTok sensation? I had no idea. <laughs> and you didn't have to get up and dance. <laughs> no, not yet anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, you did that's say cool. we were going to sing, correct? Sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. You got to dance, so TikTok. TikTok. Well, yeah, I know that's what yeah, she yeah. just said. I'm just kidding. He'll do the robot. He'll do the robot. He'll freestyle. My granddaughter just turned red. <laughs> <laughs> no they don't do that so tiktok you know that's the way it started out you do dancing and all that kind of stuff but it's pretty much turned into video yeah they do a lot of stuff i, mm -hmm. I see them every now and then that's, that's some funny stuff mm -hmm. david's on there he's in yep. sensation on my channel I, yeah, yeah so she just says to uh, record me doing something and something then stupid say, and then i'll say see you got a lot more likes on that one than than usual no i'm kidding with you um totally kidding you probably ought to take Take one of him down there at the sausage place. <laughs> at the uh -huh. oh, <laughs> here's ham at the weenie wagon. At the Wilson's weenie wagon. wagon. Yeah, Wilson's there weenie wagon. Go. There you go. That's a great idea. Uh, hey, that guy's got I a lot of plugs to tonight. I, he he needs. He, has. he, he, he needs to you're sponsor You're probably us. getting them for free, aren't you? Well, um, you know what? <laughs> he he has said that he would he would bring some, but it's like every time I mention it to my wife, she's like, "No, nah, we don't need them. We don't well, need hot dogs." Usually, we don't have a big full house. So. Yeah. yeah. Well. Hey, I could. I'd hate for somebody to come I out here just like for I, could, I could. I could do some Wilson's weenies. You know, I tell you what, I could. We, that would <laughs> be good. all right. I'd be in full support of it. Is what I'm trying to tell you. If, you know. Well, I wouldn't knock it. It's just yeah. I didn't want him to I'm drive down here for you know yeah. five or six hot dogs. I got you. Yeah, it'd be a cool sponsor though. Yeah. Why would yeah. you say that? We'll do that. Well, <laughs> I know, right? yeah. I'm considerate. Yes. All right. So let's take a quick break. And uh, we'll be right back. So if you have any questions, throw them out there. And that goes for you on TikTok as well. Go ahead and put your questions up. Or if you got any comments, we've got uh, Random Epics tuned in with us, Tim there, and Philip Riott. And so we'll be right back to Racing Roots for Ham. Maybe we'll talk to Dickie Dennis a little bit when we get back. Real Country 550 and 92.9 WAME Statesville. Real Country. At Banner Drug, we are proud to say we have been caring for our patients in our community since 1996. Our pharmacy offers a personalized customer service experience you expect from a locally owned store. To help you with your prescriptions, all four Banner
To find that perfect gift, stop by and see the area. At 730 to 3 on Saturday. Selecting diamonds directly. W A M E, and we're back to racing roots with Ham, and we're streaming streaming live worldwide here this evening. <laughs> yes, we're on Ticker Talkers too. Yeah, TikTok yeah. for the first time. Uh, I was telling him normally we'll stream. We'll do YouTube is the main platform, and we'll do YouTube, Twitch, and LinkedIn sometimes. You know, just to get more people tune in here. And uh, but we decided to try something a little different this evening. So if you're watching on TikTok, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And also, if you're listening on the radio, as you heard, WAME Radio. And I just happened to notice, David, you angled yep. that camera so that I'm in the wire. Oh, well, so I'm cut in half. But that's yeah. okay, because I'm not the star of the show. How about this? I'll slide it over. But you also have your own camera here, too. I don't want my own. Okay. So you don't want your own <laughs> I don't camera. want it up in my face. We're good. All right. So if you're just tuning in on the radio or on YouTube here, thank you for tuning in. I see Jim Dooley just joined us. And uh, so he's Rick, wanting to race his smart car. <laughs> oh yeah, he's got a little smart car. He's he's up in Virginia. Uh, I think they all drive them up there. But do they? No, I was kidding. Oh, no. He's actually got a smart car, and he's got a little trailer that he tows behind it, which is pretty funny. With a generator. Uh, hey, he goes camping, so he could. Oh, oh I'm sure so he could. A smart car is not electro, though, is it? No, no. Uh, no. They still run off an engine. I think so. I think they're so. like oh, a little yeah. uh, go kart engine or something. With wheels. Yeah, I it is. It a beer they can. do have small wheels. First time I saw yeah. it. Me and my wife, we went to a, on a trip. She's gonna kill me when I get home. Uh oh. But uh -oh, we went to Indiana to the PRI show. So she mm -hmm. sets up the car and everything, you know. And we get to the airport and we're getting in it. And I mean, this thing's little. Mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to figure out how to get the luggage in it little. And we're driving down the road. <laughs> And I said, what kind of car is this? And she leans up and looks on the dash and said, it says it's an airbag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I've oh never. My. I like the wreck. That's good. Uh, That's classic. I like that. Oh, man, that was funny. Never heard that yeah, before. That was hilarious. I about had a wreck. <laughs> so I'm, all the time, we'll, we'll be riding down the road, and I was like, what kind of car is this? And she'll say, an airbag. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny. What it says it on the dash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it said. Uh, she that wasn't mad. classic. Why didn't you bring her with you this evening? They didn't want to come, Oh, he said. okay. She was uh, scared to ride with me. So oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess she was tired. She worked all day. So yeah. they were working. Tr we're trying to get her pool ready, so she oh. was doing some work around the pool. Well, that's nice. How long did it take you to get here? About an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, your time. I yep. mean, you're, yeah. Because you're a race car driver. Well, I just cruised up the road. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I knew I was going to get here early, but I didn't, I didn't know oh, yeah. if I was going to get into any wrecks or anything, you know. Yeah. You yeah. don't know nowadays. That's true. Mm -hmm. So you just, you were prepared. You were going to get here a little early. I didn't want to be the ghost guest. The ghost guest. Well, 
after the show we'll we'll get into some of that um i'll show you what i mean you'll see yeah my daughter it's my daughter really likes ghost she she's into that yes. where she lives they have a couple so. i've got a tiktok that, that i did here in the basement and 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 it's pretty mm. interesting because should i tell Tell what? Well, tell well. I didn't. Well, I was listening. I was listening to How the about comments. This? I'll just make one little comment. I was about reading this. the comments. I, I did a video where I walked down to the basement here, and a lot of people don't realize there is one. But anyway, I was down there, and so I was talking as I was going. Oh yeah. And when I wasn't talking, the TikTok is very good about picking up on words and algor- it picks up the AI, and it, it puts everything that you say on the screen if you ask it to. You say here, pop it on, and it picked up. I need help. It really is. Yeah. And he I, did not add that. And it, and it was like, it was like you were taking in the middle of taking a breath or like a pause or something, mm-hmm. and you turn turn and it says I need help and it's really weird and really creepy and I haven't went down there since. Actually, I did like twice with you because we did do something. Yeah, you, you felt safe. I've, when I've I always went. stayed up yeah. here. Yeah, I felt safe. And I'm, I haven't I went down there by myself and I will not go down there by myself. So if yeah. I was if I was going down, we were going down together. Is that was my mentality? Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah. Hey, that's but, a song. Anyway, yeah, my daughter can play yeah. these uh, old records. These like. Uh, 33s or something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and uh certain certain music she plays she can smell a cigar Uh, okay really in her house wow so Hmm. i don't know huh so whoever lived in the house smoked cigars and listened to their whatever what was called before victoria victoria whatever victrola Victrola. yeah yeah so i don't know I told her I'd be a sell in the house, but that's just me. Yeah, well, I got I w- the ghost hunters out there. Speaking of basements, I will say mm-hmm. the uh, the basement here is is pretty pretty cool. But um, over at the old jail, which is where the art council in Ireland is now, yeah, there's the uh, you know the old cell block they use that for as like a music thing now. But um, underneath there's a uh, like I guess there were cells down there too. It's just a bunch of empty rooms, but um, we sort of. Let's just look down the stairs because I wasn't going down there. There's no chance. I would get down here, here before I would over there. But mm-hmm. it, it's pretty. It's pretty cool too. Downstairs so, at the old jail. I haven't been. Yeah. So the stairs that go upstairs, you know, where yeah. the uh, it's a pretty it's cool historic off. building. Yeah. But right on the side of those stairs, there's a door like underneath the stairs that goes to the basement. Oh, and it's like a smaller a door, and yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I guess that's where they kept the crazies. But I'm going there um, next time. And yeah. David, you're gonna get you're gonna get captured and and kept, I'm, I'm, kept I might I might get in trouble there. for. And then I don't you'll know. be going help me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I need help. I need help. Yeah, and I won't tell what uh, somebody a historian around here told me when I told him that. There, there yeah. might be an explanation, but I'm not going to that on the radio. And so yeah, fine. it's not. Yeah, because we're, <laughs> yeah. we're talking about racing here. Yes, that's so, right. So back on track, so All to speak, right? right? Yeah, back that's on right. track. Back on track. <laughs> Usually uh, Tracy has to reel, reel me back in and I get do. me on track. Sorry, I got caught up in that one, y'all. My yeah. bad. All right. So um, Dickie it, Dennis does say that uh, Jim hmm. Dooley has he has a pontoon he pulls with his smart car. Oh, the car. pontoon on his smart <laughs> car. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How goodness. dangerous could that be? I would like yeah. to see that. Yeah, I, I really am interested yeah. in that. It might have well, a tractor engine in it. Well, hey, I should do it. I should plug my other show. If if you're interested in the history and all that kind of stuff, I have a History Ham channel on YouTube and on TikTok. So History Ham, there Ham I am, History Man. And something. Mr. Will says making a car handle <laughs> so, is physics soup. He who collects the most details and stirs the quickest goes the fastest. Yeah, I agree with that. So Will Cronkite, he's actually talking about coming out with another book where he talks about the uh, the vehicle or this uh, geometry. Basically, he's an engineer. He 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 owned. Uh, so he he owned the first car, a competitive race car for Dale Earnhardt Sr. in 1978. And he when you cool. said that about hauling it to the track on a in a, a behind his pickup truck, his fleet side truck, yeah, and in a trailer, and that was the car that Dale Earnhardt. Senior drove in 1978, That's the 96 cool. car. Yeah, Will Cronkite's, and uh, and that was the uh, first competitive race car for him. That's that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a lot of stories. He's yeah, I guarantee book. he does. Yeah, NASCAR redneck. I was a NASCAR yeah. redneck, so he's on NASCARredneck.com. You know, actually, I think I I, I didn't meet him, but yeah. was he up there at the Moonshiners thing? Yes, I because I, he had some books Mount out Harry. there that 
I think he was uh, selling mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah. Okay, so you're going yeah. to that? And September 10th, I believe. Yeah, is. I went last year, I guess. Okay. Yeah, we just made our res- reservations at the Mayberry Inn. Oh. oh so. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah. Oh, that's a cool place. Well, do they we have, might need to consider they that, do. David Ham. They have, okay. they, got a, they got a Mayberry room yeah. that's set up like it was on TV, you know. And yeah. They got the old uh, police cool. car, the whole nine yards. That's yes. cool. That's mm-hmm. a cool place. That's a cool town, too. Oh yeah, get you about to eat at Snappy Lunch. That's a, that's what I've heard. Yeah, I think get there's you a bite at Snappy Lunch. Yeah, that's like the place I hear. Yeah, we got a pork chop biscuit or something maybe. Yeah, something. Yeah, something I makes that place snappy. iconic. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going <laughs> to change fine. the subject real quick. <laughs> yes. Talking about the basement. Oh yeah. Random Epic says I explored an abandoned school once. All windows were sealed shut. Me and my brother turned to leave, and one of the doors slammed shut, nearly shattering the glass in it. Talk about freaky. Oh, yeah. So someone slammed that door. There was no wow. one there but him and his brother. Well, yeah. Some, all right. Some Something. spirit. <laughs> yeah. So get out. Mm. Gosh. Get that out was of a, my or school. else staying in. Yeah. Stay in. I know. Join you know us. what? I saw my, my ham history channel and I just about stopped at this old cemetery down there in the Troutman area. I won't say where it is today. And I was like, no, nah, I got to get going. <laughs> Got to get going. See, I, I get off track real easy like I am right now. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for that, Tim. That's random epic. Adventure time, Dickie Dennis says. So speaking of adventures, Dickie Dennis likes to climb fences. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was the, uh, so in 2014, Richmond race, the infamous fence climber. They wanted to, they had to stop the race because he was hanging out up there on top of the fence. Hmm. That was him. He's a legend. Yeah, our buddy Dickie Dennis. I've never climbed a fence, but I've climbed a few walls. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, uh he's up there in Richmond, so he's let's just needless to say he's banned from going into Richmond International Raceway for the rest of his life, I guess. One time at Cherokee, <laughs> I actually got on top of the wall, yeah. rode the wall, oh, come yeah. back down, and still won the race. Oh wow! wow. I was that? slapping a car, and it yeah. come up on me, you know, and, it, and the car said, and that's, it just, "That's a pretty cool skateboarding move." No, I'm telling you, it was. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know this sounds crazy, but it wore it wore through the bumpers. And uh, had a hole in the oil pan, but we had dry sump system. So as long as we was running wide open, you know, it didn't yes. leak oil. Yeah, so, right. But it, we wow. still won the race, and That's crazy. it was just crazy. But yeah. I'd love to have a video of that. So the, the, the cars out there, you know, they didn't move over for you, I guess. No. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that flag mean? And you, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and depending on dirt track conditions, you might want to run up against the wall. Right? Oh, well, it, uh, there was a time at Gaffney you had to run right against it. Okay. But they, for a long time, it didn't have walls. When it was and half And then mile. they come and put, yeah, and then they put some walls up and, okay. and, uh, a lot of people wouldn't run up there, you know, cause it, yeah. it I mean, it, it's different when you run against a wall, especially on dirt. Yeah. But. Oh, I bet it's wild without walls too. I mean. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. But um, there was a lot of times I was glad it didn't have walls. Yeah. But, but a lot of tracks, dirt, dirt tracks, don't have walls. Okay. Yeah. I don't really understand it, but you yeah. know. Yeah. True. And then a lot of people, you know, they're putting these tractor tires on the infield, which is Ooh, yeah. the worst thing in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoever come up with that idea, yeah, shot. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, was it Jimmy Horton left? Was it Talladega? He went out of, I know Cratchity will know this one, but he left the racetrack and went out. I remember watching it on TV. And oh, yeah. Wasn't that at Daytona? The, outside of the track. It might have been Daytona. Yeah. Cause it, so they had the guardrail, yeah. but it's just like a guardrail like you would see on the road, I'm pretty sure. And so he went like, yeah, he just went oh. right over, just jumped right over. And he ended up, how, yeah. what was the situation after he, that he was okay did he make it he did okay it, it seems like i i remember either I remember thinking that, that they went out there and interviewed him outside the track or yeah. they should have <laughs> yeah and but then uh the fact that he was okay is, yeah he's okay there's there's a lot of stories there, there was one story that uh that i heard on dell jr show and, and i i'm not going to tell it because i can't remember the exact mm-hmm. details but um there was a track and i don't know if this was at myrtle beach or uh, where they said it was but there the rest of the track had a wall except for turns one and two for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And so they was talking about a really bad wreck when somebody, and this was an asphalt track, and they went up um, off of the track into the parking lot and ended up like hitting somebody's actual car. Oh, and so yeah. that wasn't a very good situation. And I can't remember who it was, so I'm not yeah. going to you know, try to do that. But. Same like when I was at Myrtle Beach, it, I don't remember seeing any opening part, but yeah. yeah. It may not have been there, but yeah. it, yeah. 
But that was a 2001, so you that was a long time ago. Myrtle Beach? It doesn't even mm-hmm. exist anymore. Yeah, in the Bush like series. That. Okay. Yeah, we did. I think that might have, I don't know if that was the last year, but no, I don't think it was the last year they ran there. Well, I learned something new. Yeah. Yeah, I got a picture, pictures of me there to prove it, I guess you could say. I was with uh, Blaze Alexander. Okay. Back then. Yeah. It's uh, there's it's amazing, you know, how many. I, it, well, I'd like to know. I don't know, but I'd like to know how many tracks has actually shut down probably in the last 10 years, you know. Mm-hmm. It's probably unbelievable how many sure. there are. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, for but, sure. Uh, well, that's probably, one that closed down. Yep. Yeah. And I remember being there. We were talking about Blaze Alexander, and uh, I was standing there with Blaze and Jimmy Johnson and, and uh, Ricky Hendricks. Ricky Hendrick before, you know. He passed. Yeah, both of them. But, uh, yeah, other tracks, I mean, well, Wilkesboro, of course, but they're going to yeah. reopen. Uh, yep. um, that's but, amazing that that's going to happen. I'm so pumped yeah. up for that. Dirt. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, I, I just can't imagine them yeah. doing it dirt and not causing a nightmare. Maybe you should come out of retirement then. I would like to do that. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. I like that. We need to um, – so if you'd like to sponsor Ricky Weeks race car to race at, at North Wilkesboro, yeah. you know what, I'm going to get in touch with North Wilkesboro too. Because I was thinking, you know what, we should be, uh, hand, you know, giving away tickets or something. Yeah. You know, promoing it. That well, that's a big a, deal, man. Yeah, it is. That's a really big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll work on that. I actually met Barry Braun on Saturday night at Hickory, which was really cool. I saw two guys walking down the stairs, and I'm packing up my stuff, getting ready to leave. It's, you know, the race is over. And these two guys have on some old school, like the – work shirts like the old style kind of like what they wore in the broadcast on sunday yeah. and they had north wilkesboro speedway on the side and on the other was racetrack revival and so i said you know those guys must be helping out with that somehow so um i went over there and talked to him and uh, he introduced himself and told me who he was he's the uh ceo of the xr racing which is putting on all of the events up there at north wilkesboro so um that was pretty cool to meet him and so yeah maybe that that's a good idea i think we should maybe maybe do that uh get connected with them i know it's going to be a fun time and from what i hear ticket sales are just through the roof and so i think it's a it's a good thing it's not often that race fans really get you know what Mm -hmm. they want as far as things like that so it's cool to see see the support that it's got and i think it's going somewhere this time i think it's got good momentum yeah i do too so if there's ever a time to bring it back it's now yeah yeah, uh, everybody seems to be missing the older days of NASCAR. Well, I think I think NASCAR, it, my personal opinion, I think they forgot where they came from mm-hmm. and went dove into these big cities, and that was a big hit for a little while. And now those people's mm-hmm. forgot them. Yep, and yep. they got to go back to where they come from. It's like I've been saying for a long time. You know, when, when okay, it's fine to bring in some new viewers, okay, mm-hmm. but you don't want to bring in those new viewers and put all of your time and energy into into only bringing in new viewers absolutely you need to satisfy the ones that you have because in racing that's one of the things all right i was born and raised in charlotte i was born and raised loving racing of, of all kinds whatever well except for indy i wasn't in indy racing because that was like yankee racing when right. i was a kid <laughs> yeah but the dirt local dirt tracks local short tracks but in nascar so i was racing and wrestling so and and so I, you could say I'm a lifetimer as far as the racing part, but you start going after people, which is fine. Go after them a little bit, but um, that aren't. It's not in their heart. Let's say that they're only. Uh, did you give them the number? Mm-hmm. Okay, that they're not. Their heart's not going to be completely in it. Then right. they're just going to get tired of it. Move on to something yeah. else. So why put so much time and energy into trying to satisfy them? The minority of fans, let's say, one yeah. meaning the lesser amount of people that are really going to be interested in and hard. I mean, enough. true race, true racing fans and true racers, you know, nine percent time we're thinking about racing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, that's the truth. Do you know, yeah. do you agree? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you Absolutely. know, if we're not, it's like if we're not addiction. thinking about it, we're oh, watching yeah. it or yeah. we're looking at something <laughs> about it, you know, it's right. just, it's what yeah. we do, yep. you know, but, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I know when I was die hard racing, I mean, I eat, breathed and slept it, you know, it mm-hmm. was, I went to bed thinking about it, woke up thinking about it. Worked all day thinking about it. Come home, worked on it thinking about it. Yeah. You know, it was just, <laughs> That's it, it was just a, yeah. well, I, I hate to say it, but it almost become a God, you know. Right, and, yeah. uh, 
which is the wrong thing for it to be for mm-hmm. sure. But it, uh, it almost took your life over. I it, guess well, it saying. did because yeah. you'd plan your vacations around it. You know, yeah, you'd, right. you'd, you know how it is. You raced. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. you was involved. And uh, my family went to vacations. That's without what me. I'm saying. You know, you <laughs> either you either planned it around it or they they did it without you. Yeah. So that's true. Very true. Uh, did you say you gave Dargan the? I did. Okay. <laughs> so you, anyway, hey. So Paul Rodriguez is down in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Thanks for tuning in. He says hello, everyone. And uh, yeah, random epic Tim says NASCAR. For me, went south after 2003. Yep. They did a lot of changes and things that, that people didn't like. And, uh, yeah, we as we mentioned, and that's just the way the ball bounces. So Myrtle, Myrtle Beach Speedway, is, yeah, it's gone now. I've seen pictures yep. of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's there's, sad. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you look back through time, it's, it's kind of always been that way. I guess there's just – if you actually search the old racetracks mm-hmm. and, and you can look at old Google images or uh, historic photos and, and – and see there was a lot of them around so when i was a kid growing up in charlotte there was one right there beside the airport right on wilkinson boulevard you know where that is little rock road wilkinson boulevard Mm -hmm. right there on the corner and i'd always heard that there was used to be a racetrack there but i didn't realize to what extent until years later kyle petty was telling me the story about old charlotte speedway and he said daddy took us in the family car you know and uh went down there and raced and and then we got in the car and drove back home after the race whatever and it was like, what? where was that racetrack? And he told me where it was. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I've heard that my whole life. There was like an Allison's trucking there later on. And right down the street was Parrot's um, uh, scrapyard or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Parrot, Parrot's junkyard, I think that's what it was called. But in, in, whatever. Not that that was related, but I always related right. it to like, you know, Buddy Parrot. And then the Allison's, of course, right. you know, yeah. as a kid. Yeah. And, and then right down the street forever is that Holiday Inn where they, the drivers would stay which Donnie told me about it um, when he was on here. And I was like, man, if I'd only known, I was I lived right down the street from there. Marty Robbins was up there doing a radio show. And after the show, he would say, ladies and gentlemen, he, he would ask him to play it, sing. He's like, I cannot sing you a song, but if you stick around after this show, I'll sing you a song. And apparently he would keep singing like all night. Oh, uh, uh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, which Metrolina – was in Charlotte or in that area, you know. Right, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I raced there years ago, and then the old Spartanburg Fairgrounds, um, which the track's kind of still there, but, mm-hmm. you know, kind of. Yeah, is it now would uh, David Pearson had raced there? Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Okay. We raced there a couple of times yeah. when I was younger. and um, I bet uh, my buddy Mike Hill would know the answer to that, let's too. Let's see. There was another one. Oh, Shelby Speedway. Yeah. Um, which – they tried to open that back up, but it was a littler version there at the fairgrounds. But Shelby Speedway. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we used to go there with my. I used to go with my dad when I was little, and it was it was a big track. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, we had Rutherford County Fairgrounds, and uh, that was a great race track. But they did away with that one hundred percent. Oh, so, really? Why yeah, was that? I guess the town didn't like it. Oh. Uh, yeah, you know there was always those o- noise ordinance things. Because it was right in the middle of. Uh, kind of town they he hung up tracy yep okay well let's just call him or tell him to call back or can you all right dargan called the number i gave you yes well i had him on hold but he hung if up. he's watching he heard that that's right <laughs> that's true that might be the easiest way to do it but yeah i remember being at the uh, dirt tracks and they're they're saying we got to finish up because of the noise ordinance and all that but you know because there's people that don't like it of course i actually loved going to racetracks where they had curfews <laughs> oh yeah well, that you makes could sense. get out of there you know without seeing the sun come up that's a good point because i remember being at the i have seen track. the sun come up <laughs> yes and it being very like hey there I called the number i gave you hey there yes all right so I need turn to that this on. turn that yeah you probably have to hey turn that down uh, we're just here getting yeah, some right. feedback we're just getting some, turn your uh, microphone down or your uh, radio or whatever you listen. <laughs> Not radio. Uh, yeah, because there's people that. All right. <clears throat> All right. So if that's Dargan calling in, you'll have to turn down your monitor. So because it's giving us a bunch right. of feedback. There you go. Hey there. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> 
How, hey, how, Rick, Jane and I are look, sitting here in the dark. We don't have any power at all. We're looking at you on a, we were expecting, we've got the big screen TV turned up so we could see all of you, but uh, uh, we can't get you on the telephone uh, that well. He so. fired everything off. Oh. <laughs> are you saving power? I, saving for your vacation? Been, no, this is home. Uh, <laughs> we got back to the doctor this afternoon, and uh, uh, as soon as you started fiddling with the buttons uh, and mashing the wrong buttons is when you went off, uh, when our power went off. <laughs> oh, He's so your power's me. off. Uh, yeah, the power's off power. completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jane, uh, did you not pay the power house. bill? <laughs> no, Jane did not pay the power bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said it must be the haunted doll downstairs. Yeah, maybe that's well, it. But, uh, David, I do have one question for Ricky. Uh, I've asked him this question a couple times. He won't answer me, but... Uh, <laughs> I have gotten this uh, uh, information from a very, very uh, close to him person. And uh, the real reason that Ricky retired from racing is because he got outrun by a 12 year old. Oh, my I, goodness. I just want him to answer that thing truthfully now. Yeah. Well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Could you have outrun him? Uh, could you have gotten around him? Well, I mean, I'd have had to ruffle his feathers to pass him, and I wasn't going to do that. So, you know, uh, it, you know, if I was going to have to knock him out of the way to pass him, I wasn't going to do it. But anyway, I was happy for him, you know, and uh, he's a good kid. And uh, before I forget it, happy birthday, Jane. Thank you. <laughs> She's listening in. She heard. Yeah. Oh yeah. She uh, she smiling. She's been smiling all day. Uh, uh, we had uh, we had a doctor's appointment uh, this morning, and I uh, uh, got a clean bill of health from the cardiologist. He said I'll see you in twelve months. So that was a, a happy time, and I guess it was worth waiting for. So, uh, but you're kind of good. Uh, you're right as far as this thing on the late models there. Now, you know, uh, we were paying five thousand dollars to win for a race uh, when I was uh, down at something twenty years ago, and you know what the purse is now? Uh, not not enough. Well, for a weekly show, it's a thousand, and for uh, Carolina Clash to win, it's five thousand. That's twenty years later, and the cars. Uh, uh, what's the cost on a, a late model now? Uh, well, a winning super late model is about 150000 Wow. So you, you pay uh, you pay a $250 entry fee. You pay $10 a gallon for the, uh, for the fuel. Uh, you use up a set of tires at, what, $1,200 now? So... Uh, uh, <laughs> I can I can understand why you say you were, you want to get out of it. So uh, hey, uh, uh, it takes a multi-millionaire to, to to be in there and be competitive. Yeah, it's uh, it's out of hand. But like I was telling um, these folks, that, you know, how do you harness technology? You know, I, I don't know what the fix is. Nobody else does either, or they'd have done fixed it. That is correct. Correct. Well, look, I just wanted to touch base with you and, and let you know that you do have one listener tonight. Uh, I understand you've got two. Uh, I think Bill, Bill Blair's listening and uh, uh, Jane and myself, so, uh, and maybe Myra's listening to you. You've got about four people listening to you. Well, if I'm lucky, maybe five will start before it quits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're in good hands up there, and uh, it's nice talking to you, David. Uh, uh, good, to, good to see and hear you, and uh, we'll see you probably uh, next time uh, around the 10th of September up in um, Mount Airy. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very good. We'll see you there. That'll be the uh, Moonshiners reunion, and uh, I think it's where we're all going to come together, you know. We'll have Will Cronkite will be there, Bill Blair, Ricky Weeks, and uh, Dargan Watts. And and bring our bring our better halves and all that kind of stuff, right? I guess. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, so well, looking forward to it. Keep up, keep up the good work, and uh, we love you all. Ricky, say hello to Myra and give her a big hug for us, and uh, uh, we'll be back on the air for you and listening to you. Yes. All righty, thank um, you. Cratchity, uh, Will Cronkite says, really good hearing from you, Dargan. I worked hard today, and, right. and he said, I'm going to bed. Great show as always. Good evening, y'all. Oh, and thanks, sir. Good evening. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you. You too. Talk to y'all later. Bye. All right. There you go. Mr. Dargan Watts calling all the way from Florida. So I guess, you know, there might be a little bit of a um, power situation down there or something, you know. He said it it, happened whenever you hung up the phone on him. Well, that's what he said. He said it must have been the ghost. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Yeah. I have no no excuse for that. I didn't hang up. Actually, it, he hung up on me. So, ah. yes, I, you know what? It just never know. You never know. I've spent many evenings in this building by myself Ooh. and uh, no problem, but I don't think about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. So there you go. That was Mr. Dargan Watts down in Florida. So he's going to be up here and he's actually, I believe he's going to come on the show in September while he's up here for the Moonshiners oh, reunion. Nice. Yeah. And uh, we've been up there. We went and saw... Uh, Jeannie, what's her name? Uh, Jeannie, da, 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 da. Barbara Eden. We tried to. Well, we didn't see her. Yes, there was like a, a two-hour line, and I was like, "Nah, forget that." And apparently, no. you had to pay when you got there. I don't remember what it was. You had to pay for the autograph or something like that. <laughs> so, I'm like, I'm glad I didn't wait in line for two hours. Yeah, yeah. There ain't no way I'd have said, "You know what? I loved you back then, and and all that kind of stuff." But you know, you're. I didn't love you that much. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Two hours in line for anything's not not, not going to happen for me. Yeah. No, no, me neither. I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> I'm not person. a line guy. <laughs> no. Yeah, David is not patient. I'll contest to that. Mm-mm. Sometime or another, when you, you guys are down my way, mm-hmm. we'll have to get together and go to the Ham What Am place. Yes, Ham What Am. I'd like to see that. It's well, a it's restaurant. country ham. They have... Really good country ham. Yeah. And, uh, we were coming back from the beach and we stopped at Morrow Mountain. Check that out. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, yeah, have you ever been to Morrow Mountain? It's a, there's some Indian. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it, Okay. So they've been, well, let's not get into the history too much again, but uh, we're, you're just mentioning that because we're. Because we made a pit stop on the way home from the yeah. mount, from the beach. Actually, our friend Chris Boucher lives out that way. So he lives over in Albemarle. Yeah. So I had texted him to say, hey, we're going to be right over here if you want to come meet us over because we had talked about it before. and uh, But he was in Concord. So, anyway, we're, um, they Stone have plant. the, they have a lot of, all right. So, this guy had property out there and there was a big mound and it was right beside the river, the uh, uh, Tillery, Lake Tillery. And so, the, the uh, government bought part of it because they suspected there might be some old Native American stuff there. So they dug it up. I think it was about 14,000 years old, something like that. Thereabouts. It's at least 10,000 years old down there once they got to digging and finding stuff. So that's where we went. I was interested in that and wanted to go by there. Hey there, who we got on the phone with us? Man, this is Kyle Armstrong. What's going on tonight, David? Hey, Kyle. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing good. I've been listening to y'all talk to Ricky Weeks tonight and long time fan of his. And I just wanted to call in there and, uh, uh, tell him, tell him that I've been a fan of his for a long time. Watched him win a lot of races. Whenever we'd see him pull in down at Cherokee Speedway, uh, we knew he's going. We knew he's going to be in the front that night for sure. Yeah. So Kyle Armstrong, his his brother Casey, who just got married, right? He did get married Saturday night. We had a great time at that too. Yeah. Congratulations. And and your dad, y'all all used to go to the racetrack because I'd see you at the Waffle House afterwards when we leave Gaffney. Well, we. <laughs> well, we still go to the racetrack. In fact, I'm at the racetrack right now. I'm over here at Charlotte. They got the Colossal 100. I came on over here a couple of days early to, to camp out. I know Ricky Weeks ran those Colossal 100s back when they originally had them, and uh, and uh, glad glad to have that event back. So I wanted to come support it. Uh, hey, so Ricky is so modest. He he's not telling us everything. <laughs> 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 uh, but anyway, yes. You want to tell us about that? Ricky, about uh, running at the Colossal. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad they brought it back too. You know, it's a, it's a really big deal, mm-hmm. and uh, we all wondered why they didn't run more races at Charlotte uh, facility than they do mm-hmm. because it's such a 
find place, but um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know. We all wondered for a long, long time. So hopefully, maybe they woke up and and uh, and I, I'm sure Kyle Larson's got a lot to do with that too. You know that mm -hmm. they've seen the interest of fans. You know on the dirt, and uh, so I'm glad to see it back. You know I'm. Uh, this is one time I wish I was a part of it again because I really like that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember seeing you win a heat race over here one night and outrun bloomquist at the colossal 100 and i remember uh talking to you or something and congratulating you the next day on that deal and uh you went on the run up front in that main event that night so yeah we uh we had some good runs there it seemed like i always run good early and and uh never did tighten my car up enough for the main events because we weren't used to running that many laps uh but anyway we had a lot of fun there and uh i'm uh uh, like I said, I'm really glad to see it come back just like you are. And um, I hope that the drivers and uh, car owners, you know, will show up to the races. Uh, these people are really trying to get this thing going. So I hope uh, they respond. Yeah, Ricky. Well, uh, hey, yeah, congratulations. Go ahead. You know, I was just going to say, but don't run off because I wanted you to tell, tell Ricky about your show. Oh, yeah, for sure. I was just going to congratulate you on a great career and i'm glad you uh i guess i'm kind of glad in a way you hung your helmet up while you was ahead in a way i i did get to see you win your last race up there at harris that blue ridge race and uh i had no idea that'd be your last one but uh i thought you'd just probably go on forever you might have thought that too but uh just congratulations on a long career and uh glad that uh you're still here to talk about it with us oh yeah i was just uh i, I raced 39 years and uh you know, like you said, I, I think I might have won my last race. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, we uh, we had a lot of fun, and I were actually wasn't planning on stopping when I did, but after I got sick and uh, uh, me and the good Lord, we decided it was time to quit, so that's what I did. Yeah, congratulations on a good career. I know you've probably still got the record for the most career wins out at Cherokee Speedway, too. Yeah, we won a lot down there. Uh, I don't know. A long time ago, somebody had to, had a paper. I had a picture of it. I'm gonna find it here. Um, <laughs> I saw it recently from the, from the '90s there, and you had like almost 100 wins. Nobody else was close. Oh, I, I, let me find that for you there. I'll find it for you. Yeah, it was uh, like 102 wins in 2000 from 1992 to 2002. This just yeah. at Cherokee. So I don't. Uh, yeah. That's, pretty good time and some of the guys you beat on that list too are, oh yeah there's some legends on there it surprised me that i actually beat duval on that deal yeah. but um you know he started traveling a lot so mm -hmm. it um yeah i'm sure that's that had something to do with that but right. there's some good drivers on that list i'm i'm very proud of that yeah yeah for sure ricky you've always been a uh, been a hero and i've looked up to you all these years and it's good to get to talk to you tonight here on the radio and uh We'll have to get you on my podcast one day and go a little bit in depth with all that and and uh, talk some more racing if you ever want to do it. We well, sure do appreciate you calling in. Hey, tell us how you can find your podcast. Oh, it's the Forward Bike Podcast. It's on Speed Sport Podcast and Spotify and Apple and all that. And we've done about forty eight episodes. We had Ronnie Sewell on there a couple of weeks ago. That was a really good show. So yeah, Ronnie's a good guy. Yeah, man, he had he had some good stories to tell. I don't even think we scratched the surface with him in an hour, but uh, <laughs> that's it's just fun to go uh, tell them old stories. If we don't tell them, they don't they don't, or if we don't put them out there, they don't nobody get to hear them. So that's right. So well, that's what we're trying well, to do: preserve history. You got and that you're right. Doing a good job of that, there, David. Too. Thank you, man. You are too. To keep doing what you're doing because I I appreciate it. Just like you appreciate me doing this. You know, we like to preserve it. Very cool. We're a, we're a fan of each other, man. Yeah, buddy. Uh, keep digging. You too, buddy. Good to talk to you, Kyle. All right. See you. I'll have a good evening. Uh, you too. Thank you, Kyle. See you, bye. Yes, sir. He works down there. It uh, used to be, uh, let's see, it's SRS Racing Products, you know. Yeah. Place. I was going to say it used to be Ralph Yates Performance Products, and then they ended up buying it. Yeah. SRS. And then the last time I saw him, he was down there. I was like, what are you doing down here? And he was working. But like I mentioned, he... I know him from just from going to the dirt tracks, right? Hanging around because um, my nephew would be out there, and 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 uh, 
and then I'd see Kyle and Casey and his dad and them out there all the time. They go a lot more than I than I did. Yeah. And they and they still go. So that's big race fans right there. Oh yeah. yeah. That's mm-hmm. they're uh there's some there's some big race fans out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know yourself mm-hmm. and uh they're like they might not have race cars but they eat, breathe and sleep it just as much as racers do. Yeah. Right. So if when you uh watch NASCAR or when you used to watch it, whatever, who was your favorite driver? Well, I mean, I still watch NASCAR, mm-hmm. but uh, I mean, now of course Kyle Larson is my favorite driver. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I was Earnhardt Senior fan because okay. my dad was, and uh, mm-hmm. you know I liked him a lot. And I'm also a Jimmy Johnson fan. Okay. And I'm pretty. I don't really understand why he's doing it, but I'm impressed with how he's doing in this Indy car thing. You know, which I mm-hmm. don't know why he's doing it, but yeah, that's his business. But yeah. he he's a he's a great guy and a, and a really mm-hmm. good racer. Yeah. Yeah, I guess with him, I think what it is is it's kind of like, you know, he 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 proved himself in the cups in the NASCAR Cup Series and the Bush Series. I mean, he done really good in there, and then now it's like, well, what can I do next? You know, it's like mm-hmm. the competitor, and always, not that everything nothing's ever good enough, but it's like you need that challenge. And he probably just got like, you know what? I need another challenge. I <laughs> so, just hope he don't get hurt. I know that's what I worried about too. The first thing was that going to that open wheel stuff. My wife calls him Jimmy Who. Jimmy Who? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll say something about uh, it. She'll say Jimmy Who. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, it's funny. In, in the racing world, it's like you have uh, Dale Earnhardt. So when you say Dale Earnhardt, that probably means you didn't what much of a Jeff Gordon fan. Let's say, you know, it's kind of like. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you got to put credit where credit's due. You know, Jeff yeah. Gordon was great. You know, mm-hmm. he really was. I mean, he was kind of different. Yeah. So in our world, where we're from, you know, he mm-hmm. didn't fit in, you know, but yes. but he's a great racer. You right. know, can't nobody deny that. Yeah, that's and, for sure. Uh, yeah. And even Earnhardt had to uh, uh, agree to that sooner or later, you know. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> they, right. He put them all to work, I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, he sure did. And, you know, you wonder, too, how many championships – let's say Earnhardt maybe if Jeff Gordon wasn't around you know you just yeah you know that kind of stuff think about it but it is what it is that just means I had to step it up that much more so <laughs> random epic says I had to wait once for John Snyder's autograph $20 20 bucks I who would have thought that I wouldn't have I thought about getting him on the show sometime because I've had friends run into him I wouldn't ask mm-hmm. for his autograph if he was standing here but uh no I mean heck just, just like, hey man nice to meet you can we get a picture with you yeah <laughs> that's about it that's cool yeah Bo Duke, if you don't know who we're talking about. But he's also a singer. Really yeah. good singer, too. Yeah. I was an odd kid. I had his cassette tape. I actually think he's a better singer than he is actor myself. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just my opinion. That was but, Hollywood. You, you know, know yeah. he, uh, that good. was, a, I liked that show, though. Oh, yeah. It was, it was great. Pretty cool. That show. was my first favorite show, was the yeah. Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. I, I mean, you know. I always liked the fast cars. What did you like so, about it so much? The the fast cars and, <laughs> oh, okay, and sure. sliding around on, on the dirt roads and everything. I just thought what that was, was that girl's name on that show. Whoa, whoa. Daisy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you, she you was in like there her too. Dukes. Yeah, I think yeah. she might have been in there. I think I remember her. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not I sure. So. Yeah. I think it's yeah. what Ricky was getting at. Yeah, I know that's what he's getting at. That's why. I was, <laughs> he, he went everybody, world, everybody knows that. Yeah, that's for sure. That's right. All right. Well, we're gonna wrap it up but uh thank you ricky weeks mr ricky weeks for coming in so what's next for you you got your you got grandkids to look after and all that good stuff well i mean i'm just really enjoying family time now yeah. you know um it's a lot i mean mm-hmm. i hate to say it you know but uh every weekend you know i was racing and every night i was working on race cars mm-hmm. so uh you know i'm really really enjoying that and mm-hmm. uh, uh i got seven grandkids so we got a lot of grandkids to play with and uh so mm-hmm. that's a lot of fun we have uh three boys and four girls oh so how about that, that wow. they're, awesome. they're a lot of fun so i'm you know just kind of enjoying life you know so yeah. uh just thankful i'm still here because i thought i was gone i really did so yeah yeah we're glad to still lost, have you. lost a lot of friends to that mess you know sure. so uh, yeah and a lot of people did so it's uh mm-hmm. I uh, hope we're on the tail end of that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. hope so. Well, I did want to say right quick that Mr. Bill Blair messaged me and said he was listening in. It's a great show, and he can't wait to see us in Mount Airy. Oh, yeah, very good. Mr. Bill Blair. You know what? I bet we'll see him before then, but, but definitely uh, you'll see. 
We'll all see him there. He's That'd a good great. man. He is a very nice yeah, man. Very and nice. Sheila, his wife. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. She's yeah. not a man, but she's sweet. Right. Yep. Some of the best people around, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Kyle sent me a picture standing in my camper here while I was on the phone with y'all in this uh, phone collage on my, on my stove top. That's cool. Pictures of Ricky Wee's car. Pretty cool. Look at this. How about that? That's in his camper? Yeah. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, he's got a lot of I'd cars. Have to show the camera. Yeah. Cool. Yep. I'll show it to to the TikTokers right quick, and then um, then we'll go right over here. All right. All right. So anyway, I'll, maybe I'll post that later or something. But if you would uh, hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this show, and stay tuned next week because we're gonna have Peggy Flock, who is the daughter of Tim Flock. Peggy Flock. Yes, Tim Flock was a two-time NASCAR champion. And his his, his brothers, well, yeah, he had Jocko Flacco, the monkey that rode in a car with him mm-hmm. for a little while. And then he had his uh, brothers, Bob and Fonny Flacco. Wasn't his car like a convertible? Yeah, he did those two. Yeah. But they had, uh, the one with the monkey was in it. I don't know about that one. Was he a monkey or a chimpanzee or Whatever. orangutan? We'll find out That's next right. Monday. At seven. He was hairy. <laughs> <Race through time. laughs> yes. He was hairy, yes, he was for a, sure. <laughs> he was a mammal of sorts. Oh, we're going to show the uh, painting here by yes. Amy Queen Chapin. Just don't forget that. At least we not forget. I mean, you know, before the show ends, let's go ahead and show that. Let the TikTokers see, too. Yeah, here we go. Show it to this camera right here. There we go. Yep, that's it. Mr. Ricky Weeks right there. Very nice. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Very now cool that's story. talent right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. She got some talents. I mean, queenchevinart.com. Check it out. Check it out, y'all. And uh, so don't forget to check out uh, racingroots.com. As always, dmim.com. But I'm trying to move all the, everything from this show over to the racingroots.com. So I actually got an article. Well, I put pictures of you on there. And then I put the little uh, write up, same that I did for the show, on the website. Cool. Yeah. So that way, when people do a search, then they'll see it, you know, and they'll say, "Oh, that yeah, there's Ricky Weeks right there." Well, so, that's all right. Yeah, Got man. Well, I've really enjoyed this. Preserving that history. That's right. That's, that's right. right. You've done a lot the for the sport. The living legend. That's it, man. <laughs> you are a living legend for sure. And uh, so, thanks for coming up here. Artie Ford is up in uh, New Hampshire. Is that right? He says, family, awesome night, y'all. All thanks, David and Tracy. So, R.D., you like how he always says, is that right? After he says where you live. I know, man, because I always <laughs> want to say Michigan because I know no, he's not. It's New Hampshire. Because of because of the Ford thing, whatever, but it's New Hampshire. New yes, Hampshire. So. All right. Well, um, I, I might, guess we'll. You might take him down in the basement after the show, huh? Yeah, we're going to go down in the basement, so we got to get off here and go do some his, hunting history. Well, uh, look, check out my history ham. I'm not going either. Channel <laughs> okay. For the history stuff, you know, we talked about that a lot this evening, and we got saved by a couple of phone calls here. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Everybody loves history too. So, all right, y'all have a great evening, and we'll see y'all next Monday evening. And uh, also, thanks to Swim Pool and Spa, Neil Johnson over there, 704 322 4204 for all of your swimming pool needs and spas, and put a pool liner in for you. I think he comes out there and rolls around. I always try to figure out how he got all the wrinkles out. I think he just puts down and then rolls around on it. Maybe he's got really big feet. 